think we're gonna get started. Uh, thank you guys for coming. Um, I want this to be a high-level debate, uh, and you know, something that we can have as a recording, something that lays out uh, the case for Bitcoin versus Bitcoin Cash. Uh, I, I think my opponent has uh, has done a lot of stuff. Uh, let me let me just uh, like sort of prep everything, and then we'll we'll get started after I tell you what the format's going to be. Uh, we're going to try a Lincoln Douglas style debate. Uh, Roger claims that he doesn't want to agree to that or something, then that's fine. I'll just I'll just finish. But no, no. I, you can you can you can go ahead. No, no. I have one question. Do you need to terminate Lincoln Douglas? Is this part of his ten minutes? This is what Roger does. All right, but can you can you sit down, please? Can, can, I, I'm doing an introduction. Can you can you? Can Does someone have a timer, please? Right. This is not part of the ten minutes. I'm just trying to do the introduction. I just want to introduce the format, and then and then I will get started. Okay. So uh, yeah, I I. It's going to be 10 minutes me, 10 minutes Roger, 5 minutes me, 5 minutes Roger, 5 minutes me, 5 minutes Roger. Roger. <laughs> so, it. so it's going to be about 40 minutes, and then if we have time afterwards, we'll start asking each other questions, but there's only one mic, so there's no interruptions or anything like that, like you just tried. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll keep it civil. I want to keep it at a higher level. I think there's way too much Jerry Springer and not enough Supreme Court. So anyway, that, uh, that's, that's, that's what I would like to see. All right, so I would like to get started. If somebody has a timer, um, just just make sure, uh, like somebody show me a timer thing. Okay, ready? Roger, oh. it's not your turn. It's not your turn, Roger. No, I just introduced the tournament. It's, it, okay, it's not your turn. And we, I just, I think everyone knows who we are. So I, I don't think we need to do that. I'd like one minute for an introduction as well, please. I think that's fair. Yeah, one minute. I did. I want just the debate. I don't want. I don't want to. You can do a, a one-minute introduction of who you are. I just introduce the format. That's it. Okay. Hey, can you not interrupt, please? Sit down, please. Sit down, please. Do you want to debate me or not? Okay, then sit down. I introduce the format, not me. Sit down, Who are you actually? You know what? what are, if you if you don't want to debate me, you can get off the stage. All right, so this is this is exactly what I expected to happen to somebody that's that's like this. Hey, Where is the moderator? I had one minute to introduce the format. I didn't do anything else. Okay, you could you could. I, I just said it's Lincoln Douglas. I already introduced the format. If you don't want to, Roger, Roger. Here's another microphone. Then, then I am I, I, I am refusing to do the debate if there's two mics. I will, when we start the debate, we'll have one mic. But I'll have one minute to talk about the format. So hard, bro, bro, I'm off too. So here's what happened. I'll spend one minute going over it. I arrived at the debate. Hey, when are you going to stop using Bitcoin Core? I don't own it. It's Bitcoin not your turn, sir. It's but, right. It's not yours either. So now we have chaos. Oh, yeah. If, right. Jimmy, the if Jimmy doesn't want to debate, I'd be happy to debate you as well. And anyhow, in regards to the format, you're interrupting me, Jimmy. I didn't interrupt you during your one minute. So. You did your mic. Anyhow. here that he prepared in advance. Nothing was told to me about that in advance whatsoever. So if anybody's ambushing anybody, it's Jimmy. We'll give one microphone on the stage so nobody can interrupt and everybody can hear what they say. So Jimmy, I yield the rest of my time to you and I won't interrupt you. You have 10 minutes to say whatever you want, Jimmy. Your turn. Come on down, Jimmy.
It, this is this is exactly why nobody likes to debate Roger because he he does stuff like this. Anyway, who has the timer, please? If he, if he tries to interrupt me again, I will walk off stage. I will not debate him ever again. And that will be it, because I think he's, he likes to do this. This is his, uh, his thing. Uh, all right. Anyway, I, I think it's his part, part of the game. All right, first I'd like to thank the organizers of this cruise and everyone at the conference. Um, and believe it or not, I'd like to thank Roger, because he's done a lot for Bitcoin, especially early on. And, uh, and, you know, we may be debating today, but I actually like what he does for the cause of liberty. In that regard, I think we need less government intervention. Anyway, is a fiat money. Bitcoin Cash is a fiat money. You may be thinking at this point that I'm trolling or exaggerating. I'm not. I'm stating a fact. To prove this to you, let's look at what fiat means. According to the Merriam-Webster dictionary, fiat is a command or act of will that creates something without or as if, without further effort, arbitrary order. Thus, a fiat money is a money created from an act or act of, uh, a command or act of will that creates something without or as if, without further effort, an authoritative determination, or an authoritative or arbitrary order. My contention here today is that Bitcoin Cash is a money very much along these lines. Now, as I said before, I admire Roger's efforts to liberate us from government authoritarianism. We are agreed on the need to be liberated from government paternalism. However, there are two ways that you can combat government authoritarianism. First is to get a new person to be the central authority. The second is to actually decentralize that power. And Bitcoin and Bitcoin Cash take different paths to doing this. Bitcoin is classically liberal, anarcho-capitalist, and Austrian befitting its cypherpunk roots. It's a sound money. Bitcoin Cash is interventionist, paternalistic, and Keynesian befitting its corporate roots and is a fiat money. So let's start with Bitcoin. Bitcoin is a decentralized hard money. Bitcoin is all about self-sovereignty over your own money, befitting its cypherpunk roots. There is no central authority. Each individual runs what software they want, what features are utilized, and which use cases are prioritized. In other words, Bitcoin is decentralized. Bitcoin is money for people who want property rights over their money. The economic philosophy is Austrian in the sense that there are no central authorities intervening in the marketplace. In Bitcoin, the market figures out solutions to any perceived problems. There is no central authority telling everyone, we know what's best for you. Each person gets to choose based on rules that are stable and immutable. This makes Bitcoin uncensorable and without a single point of failure or control which another entity can co-opt. There is no governance in Bitcoin because governance is another way of saying centralized control. The governance failure of Segwit2x was in fact a demonstration of this feature. Users are sovereign over their own money. Bitcoin is unique in this regard, as every other altcoin has a single point of failure or control, which can be co-opted by another entity. And users really aren't sovereign over those tokens. This makes Bitcoin uncensorable and without a single point of failure or control, which another entity can do. Yeah. Bitcoin Cash is a fiat money. Bitcoin Cash rose out of Bitme. Bitcoin Cash is centralized with an elite group that determines a roadmap. They determine what will be implemented and what will not through authoritarian hard forks. These are forced upgrades decided by a central authority that everyone must follow in order to stay on Bitcoin Cash. These hard forks mean that at a minimum, 
the economic incentives change. They pick the winners and losers. The economic philosophy of Bitcoin Cash is Keynesian and that central authorities intervene to spur innovation or solve problems. The method of payment use case has been subsidized by central authorities through large blocks despite all market signals to the contrary. My opponent says things like transactions should be free as if they're entitlements. The smart contract use case has also been subsidized by central authorities despite there being very little utility or demand for such a thing. Bitcoin Cash is paternalistic. And this leads to power struggles like we're seeing now. Bitmain and Craig Wright are now embroiled in a fight over which direction to take Bitcoin Cash. They will probably end up splitting Bitcoin Cash to at least two different forks, possibly even three. Bitcoin Cash is not a network where users are sovereign. It's controlled by the central authorities. This makes Bitcoin Cash very difficult to build on unless you happen to have the central authorities' per cooperation as the incentives keep changing. It's no wonder my opponent is marketing constantly on its behalf. For example, you can see all the Bitcoin.com and Bitch Please t-shirts all over the place here today, as well as banners and uh, similar things happen at every blockchain conference around the world. Bitmain is a central bank of Bitcoin Cash. Bitmain has tried to maintain a peg to their reserve currency, Bitcoin, and has failed. Bitmain has failed to keep the peg at 0 0.15 Bitcoin, 0 0.12 Bitcoin, and recently capitulated the 0 0.1 Bitcoin level. This is a central bank selling its reserves to keep a peg to another currency. What's worse, much like a central bank, they seem to be running out of reserves, and Bitcoin Cash will finally float on the market instead of having the artificially inflated value that it has now. Bitcoin Cash is a fiat money and their main appeal is that they'll be better than the fiat central bankers that you already know. The promise of Bitcoin Cash is governance as a benevolent ruler versus granting you actual sense. This is the major difference between Bitcoin and Bitcoin Cash and it's the reason why Bitcoin Cash is no different than any other altcoin. Which brings me to my last point. Bitcoin Cash has no reason for its existence. There are already lots of altcoins that do what Bitcoin Cash does. Like Bitcoin Cash, they are centralized and many are superior as methods of payment. My opponent in our last debate brought up that altcoins don't have the same history as Bitcoin Cash and that the ledger in Bitcoin Cash has Bitcoin's history. But this too is a spurious argument. Having the same ledger merely means that there it was an involuntary airdrop to the Bitcoin holders, nothing more. Besides, there are 74 different hard forks of Bitcoin at this moment, including Bitcoin Gold, which has a different proof of work, governance, and a roadmap, Bitcoin Interest, which has a proof of stake, Bitcoin Private, which has Bitcoin privacy, uh, which has privacy and fungibility, Lightning Bitcoin, which allow for ultra-fast transaction settlement on the order of seconds, Bitcoin Clean, which is supposedly environmentally friendly, and many other non-trivial hard forks like Bitcoin Diamond, Super Bitcoin, Bitcoin X, BitCore, Bitcoin 2X, Bitcoin File, Bitcoin Atom, Bitcoin Vote, Bitcoin World, Bitcoin Pay, Bitcoin Faith, and my personal favorite, Bitcoin God. That one really makes wants to make it clear to you that they are the central authority. All of them have a roadmap, non-negligible value, and interesting features, all while preserving the history of Bitcoin. Like Bitcoin Cash, they require us to give up our self-sovereignty over our own money in exchange. Instead of verifying, the overlords of these forks want us to trust them. And this is the main value proposition behind every hard fork in altcoin. It's a bet on the people in control. This is why so many of them, including Bitcoin Cash, spend so much money on marketing and what's essentially propaganda. They want us to trust them and not verify anything on our own. My opponent has spent enormous amounts of money promoting Bitcoin Cash, doing interviews with anyone and everyone, debating anyone who will debate him, even ambushing people like me, TMZ style, and saying things like Bitcoin, is the, Bitcoin Cash is the real Bitcoin while continuing to hold Bitcoin, and the flipping is inevitable without willing to back those up, words up with bets. He continues to spout kooky conspiracy theories about Blockstream, Gilderberg, Gavin and Driesen, Mike Kern, and private forum censorship. That is the behavior of a used car salesman trying to sell his wares, not someone that's being honest. Bitcoin Cash is centralized with a small group that makes all the decisions for everyone else. Bitcoin Cash is paternalistic and imposing particular use cases no matter what the market says. Bitcoin Cash 
is Keynesian instead of intervening, uh, which is Keynesian in intervening instead of letting normal market forces play out. Bitcoin Cash is a fiat money. So once again, the format for this was kept secret from me before the event. The subject matter to be discussed in the format was kept secret from the event, before, the, before this event. And my goodness, what a bunch of nonsense from Jimmy. And I'm looking forward to refuting every single one of it, especially towards them when I can ask you some direct questions. But one of the final things I heard, because I didn't have any notes to take during the, the time there, he said that I'm not willing to make a bet to back up my predictions about Bitcoin Cash overtaking Bitcoin. Well, I have an offer for Jimmy on that. I'll bet a million dollars equivalent in whatever cryptocurrency you want that within 10 years, Bitcoin Cash will have a larger market cap than the BTC version of Bitcoin today. I yield the rest of my time to you, Jimmy, and I look forward to the question and answers at the end. Well, that, that, that is a great offer, um, and I want to... Yeah, so he, he, he didn't want to take his time, which means that I think he's more or less conceding his points. Um, I don't know. Whatever he wants to say is fine, and this is a format that he's obviously trying to subvert for his own benefit. And he wants to do TNT style, Jerry Springer style stuff instead of actual arguing his point. So he doesn't seem to have a point. So I will I will continue here. Um, if you'd like a pen and paper, yeah, here's my pen. Write it down, write it down, honey. I want this to be fair, but uh, if, you, if you don't want to take that fairness, that's fine. Okay. All right. So he, he didn't refute any of my points. I will say that Bitcoin Cash is very much centralized. He doesn't want to refute them, so he just calls them nonsense, which is a way of just dismissing the entire thing, right? But Bitcoin Cash is very much centralized. The development team uh, for Bitcoin Cash is incompetent but they nevertheless make choices for the entire community. The emergency difficulty adjustment that started the whole thing was a complete disaster. And uh, you know, it, it caused miners to come in extremely close, uh, extremely close blocks and, uh, and eventually led to another hard fork. Um, their hard fork earlier this year uh, had a consensus bug, which is the worst possible type of bug you can make. It would have split the network in two and it would have been very easy to double spend. The governance process of Bitcoin Cash is simply centralized. There's an elite group that decides what the users must agree to. They listen to the users, but ultimately they make the decisions. This is evident in, the, in that the governance process is not at all transparent and the roadmap is decided by an elite group. I mean, they're fighting about it now. Craig Wright versus Bitmain, right? Jihan versus Craig or Amory versus Craig or I, I don't know who the other people are, but uh, I think it's Calvin or something like that. But they're, they're infighting. What's that? Calvin Yeah. The, there's a lot of infighting because it's centralized. They're looking to gain that power, right? If there was nothing to fight over, they wouldn't be fighting. They're fighting over who gets to control the coin. And, uh, and this is what Bitmain and Craig Wright are doing. And ask yourself, why, why is an obvious scammer like Craig Wright doing in this community? Why is he there? He's there because he's going to gain something out of it. He's there because he can go scam. Scammers go where they can scam. And as I've said, there are lots of altcoins that are centralized. There are lots of other choices that are faster, more private, easier to use if you're using, looking to use centralized coins. Bitcoin Cash doesn't add anything new. <laughs> and, uh, and, and this is one of the things that you have to be very careful about when you have a centralized authority. Because in Bit it, it, with Bitcoin Cash, the central power needs to be lobbied to make any changes. And Bitcoin Cash does not give user sovereignty over their own money because the, the people that are in charge get to do, do whatever. And that's governance by fiat. And every single fiat money ever has inflated. Okay? has been devalued, has been debased. 
And this is due to the moral hazard that exists in fiat currency. The central authority can print more money. It's the epitome of hubris to believe that what's happened to every other fiat currency won't happen to you. Right? Just trust us. We're the paragons of virtue. We won't print any more money. Yeah, right. My opponent's argument basically comes down to trust us. Right? Trust us. We won't inflate it. This has to be said over and over again by every single government. Okay. So uh, thank you to this lady for letting me borrow her pad to take a couple of notes. I'd like to point out that Jimmy started his rebuttal by saying that I didn't address any of the points that he made. Well, I concluded my last little point with offering a $1 million bet challenge to Jimmy that the market cap of Bitcoin Cash will be higher than the market cap of BTC in 10 years from now. He didn't address that at all. You won't have a million dollars, Jimmy. And if, if a million dollars is too much for him, he can name the amount he wants to bet. So uh, I'm more than happy to bet whatever amount you would like on that. Uh, another point that he made there was Bitcoin Cash being centralized. And he's saying that, he said Bitcoin Cash is centralized. And then he spent a whole bunch of time talking about a whole bunch of people like Craig Wright and Calvin Ayer and Omri Sachet and ABC and Bitcoin Unlimited. And they're all fighting with each other. If Bitcoin Cash is centralized, then why are a bunch of people fighting with each other over it? The very fact that there's a whole bunch of fighting going on shows that it's not centralized. And the very fact that the BTC community has expelled anybody from their community that disagrees with the roadmap and literally kicked them out of the community by silencing their voice and deleting their posts and banning them from our Bitcoin on Reddit and BitcoinTalk.org the fact that they've been able to do that and have the power to do that, if anything, that shows that the BTC coin is the one that's centrally controlled with the iron fist of totalitarianism. Whereas Bitcoin Cash, if you go on our BTC or the Bitcoin forum at Bitcoin.com, you'll see all sorts of people arguing about all sorts of things and lots of disagreement and sometimes it's a little bit much because there's so much arguing stuff going on. But that's the sign of a society or a community that's willing to accept considering new ideas and willing to accept that maybe, maybe I don't know the absolute best thing for the world. Maybe other people have ideas too. Maybe I should stop and listen to them. And maybe I shouldn't delete other people's posts if I disagree with them. And that's the Bitcoin Cash community. They are open to new ideas. They're open to learning new things. Whereas the BTC community will literally delete your posts on the discussion platforms they control and ban you from their community. And so that's why there's consensus within BTC because they've kicked out anybody that disagrees. Another thing he was talking about, Bitmain versus Craig, Craig Wright. Well, again, if Bitcoin Cash is so centralized, why are all these people fighting over it? And the biggest nonsense that I managed to take notes of that he was talking about was, uh, was fiat. He said Bitcoin Cash is fiat. Well, the definition of fiat is money by decree. And the very, very essence of cryptocurrencies is that nobody is forcing anybody to use them. If you don't like BTC, don't use it. If you don't like BCH, don't use it. If you don't like Monero Dash, Zcoin, Zcash, take your pick. If you don't like them, don't use them. That's the very opposite of fiat because with fiat, with dollars and euros and yen, the government say you have to use our money. You have to pay us taxes in those money. And if you don't, we'll lock you in a cage. That's what fiat is. Cryptocurrencies are not fiat currency. Cryptocurrencies are the currency of freedom. And I have two more minutes to continue and we promise no interruptions, so we'll wait until the timer tells me my time is up. Thank you very much. And I have I hear two minutes two minutes from here, I believe he started. Two minutes left. So I want to tell people a little bit of a story and hopefully I'll finish it within two minutes of why I'm so excited, not just about Bitcoin Cash, but cryptocurrencies in general across the world. And it's because they have the ability to undermine every single government on the planet's control of people using fiat currency. And I don't care if it's Bitcoin Cash, Dash, Monero, Zcoin, you take your pick. Whatever cryptocurrency works as cash for people all over the world is the one that I'm going to support because I'm sick of people being forced to pay for wars all over the world, pay for locking people in jail, for smoking a plant that makes them feel happy, or having a white powder that makes them feel happy. I am sick of that. And cryptocurrencies that are usable as cash 
have the ability to strip government's power away from them. And I don't care which cryptocurrency it is, but the reason I'm busy promoting Bitcoin Cash every day is because I think Bitcoin Cash has the best chance to do that because it's the biggest user base. The transactions are fast, cheap, and reliable. It has a community that's open to allow people to discuss these ideas. Bitcoin Cash is the cryptocurrency that has the ability to bring more freedom to the entire world than any other cryptocurrency in the world. And that's why I'm busy promoting Bitcoin Cash today. I yield the rest of my time to you, Jimmy. That's what I'm doing. He, he told me that he didn't, uh, he, he, he didn't stack the audience at all. Okay, yeah, sure. Okay, uh, so let me let me go through a couple of things. Uh, with the one million dollars, ten years is way too long. I'm not going to go try to track you down, Roger, in ten years. But if you sh shorten that time frame, I'd be glad to take that bet. Um, all right. So first thing he talked about was uh, about fighting. Um, I think Republicans and Democrats fight quite a bit in this centralized in the centralized system that's called the U.S. government. So I don't think that argument holds water whatsoever. Any other, every other political place also does the same thing. Um, all right, and he, he defined fiat as legal tender laws. That's not what it means. It means a centralized authoritarian money, okay? And that's what Bitcoin Cash is. It's an authoritarian centralized money. All right, so let's talk about a few things. He talked about Gavin, uh, I, I, presumably Gavin, Mike, and Jeff, uh, about how they got kicked out of the community. Gavin, Mike, and, and, and Jeff were all contributors to Core, and I am grateful for what they've done. All three are still free to contribute. I suspect they don't want to because they don't have the clout that they once did. And that's entirely on them for not producing, not on core. What my opponent is really objecting to is the fact that these individuals don't have the influence that they all once did. Having a good reputation in the core community is not something you are entitled to for the rest of your life. Bitcoin core is not a bureaucracy where you can coast, do very little, and not get fired. Bitcoin is a meritocracy, and that means that you not only have to keep doing good work, but you also have to get better as the code and developer quality improves. These three contributors simply didn't meet the rising bar that other contributors clearly set. That was most of the reasons why these three lost their reputation. There were other contributing factors. Mike and Gavin wanted to make Mike the benevolent dictator for life of Bitcoin. They wanted to centralize around Mike Kern, and when the rest of the community said no, Mike rage quit. Gavin enabled a scammer like Craig Wright through techno technical incompetence in not being able to check a simple signature. Jeff started doing ICOs and altcoins. They had good reasons to lose their reputation. Whatever the reason, they lost their cloud and are no longer contributing, though they are free to. In Bitcoin, nobody gets a position for life as in a centralized system. What my opponent is really objecting to is the meritocracy. You only get influence if your contributions are useful. Influence is hard to earn and easily lost in a meritocracy. The reason my opponent is unhappy about these three developers not having influence is that they're more open to his ideas, and this has reduced his influence. He's identified this as one of the reasons he lost the debate. He, and really, he can't seem to face the prospect of being wrong. And being heard in a private forum is not an entitlement. A lot of people are frustrated with our Bitcoin, and that's why it's not nearly as popular as it once was. I, including me, I don't go there anymore. That's the free market at work. Getting silenced sucks, but unless the one doing that silencing is the government, it's not illegal. My opponent seems to think he's entitled to do whatever he wants in a private forum. Does he want the central authority to say that he must be allowed to speak? Does he want to violate the freedom of assembly and force unwilling audiences to listen to him? Once again, we have a sore loser complaining about getting kicked out. Can't possibly be that his ideas are bad. Must be a conspiracy. It's Blockstream or Bilderberg or Jewish bankers or something. The forum moderators are private individuals that decided to exercise the freedom of assembly. Sorry if you weren't made to feel welcome, but that just means your ideas are lost. Not that there's some kooky conspiracy. Complaining about access is what slick salesmen say because it decreases their sales. The censorship is sour grapes at not having access to a private audience. Hell hath no fury like a sore loser. I yield the rest of my time. So I'd like to point out that uh, I believe after this we get to ask each other some questions back and forth, but Jimmy has quite a stack of notes there that he prepared in advance of today. 
and it looks like he was just reading from a script and didn't really talk about the things that I was here complaining about. And so nicely done reading from your script. <clears throat> One of the things that he tried to just dismiss out of hand was the censorship happening within the BTC community. If you don't believe me about the censorship, try posting a link to this video on our Bitcoin on Reddit, the most popular discussion platform in the entire world for Bitcoin related things. A, video, a link to this video, I guarantee you will be deleted from our Bitcoin. And that's how strong the censorship to this very day Shani, still is. Shani, Shani, you're, you're mixing up the word Shani, we shun you. It's not censorship, it's Shani. So again, I, I heard a number of other straw men arguments in there that I didn't make today that Jimmy tried to give a rebuttal to. And I heard a lot of talk about crypto Keynesianism and crypto Austrians and that sort of thing. Well, I want to talk a little bit about my Austrian street cred. I've read every single book by Ludwig von Mises. I've read every single book by Murray Rothbard. I've read Henry Hazlitt. I've read uh, Adam Smith from cover to cover, right? I've read just about every single book that was in the laissez-faire books catalog. And this was a paper catalog in the late 90s before they had like their website going. I ordered all of them and I read just about all of them. And you can go and visit Bitcoin.com. We have a list over there of the books that I recommend. We have people talking about it. And I wasn't born a libertarian. It was from reading these books on economics that I realized that government intervention into the economy and government centrally planning things, box size, is what retards the rate of economic growth in the entire world. And in economics, the cap on the block size is called a production quota. So we have a bunch of central planners in the form of the BTC developers centrally planning the amount of block size that the market is allowed to produce, where we have the market all over the world wanting to buy and bid for space within that block. And what we've seen happen, the market finds a way to solve that problem. The market has moved to block space in chains other than the BTC chain. And that's why we saw Bitcoin's market share, share plummet from nearly 100% down to somewhere in the ballpark of 50% uh, today. And so we hear about crypto Keynesians. Well, I'd like to ask Jimmy, have you read John Maynard Keynes, The General Theory of Money from Cover to Cover? I have. I would like to hear if you have. And if you have, tell me what you learned. And I look forward to beginning our back and forth questions. And I'll be respectful and not interrupt you during your questions. Maybe we can limit each question and answer to 30 seconds. Is that, is that fair for you? Your first answer? OK, whatever I want to do, we heard it. So uh, my question to you, Jimmy. How have you read? You've been talking a lot and making videos about crypto Keynesians. Have you read the, have you, I'll give you the mic, I'll put it here when I'm done. I have, I have two minutes left, so maybe a minute 45. Have you read John Maynard Keynes, The General Theory of Money and Credit, the defining book of what Keynesianism is, which I've read cover to cover. I'd like to hear if you've read it and what you learned from it and what your takeaway from it was. Thank you. Have you listened to the audio book as well? But, for myself personally, I learn much, much more from reading the actual textbook. So your turn, Jimmy. Have you read The General Theory of Money and Credit by John Maynard Keynes? And if no, fine. If not, what did you learn from it? What did you think his uh, goal with that book was? What was he trying to accomplish? I love how he's appealing to his own authority. You have to trust me. I've read every book, and therefore I'm not going to make any arguments. You're just going to have to trust me. That's more or less what his argument comes down to. I'm not interested in gotcha politics, okay? Did you read this one? Did you read this one? That's not what I'm about. I, I, I refuse to answer that question because I think it's stupid. It's not about that. It's about the actual ideas, okay? All right, I'm gonna ask you a question now. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, it's not gonna be just you and me. I get to ask you a question now. All, all right, then, then I get to ask her. I get, I get to reply and then he gets to ask the next question. So he just pointed out that we shouldn't even bother reading the primary sources of the things we're talking about. Of course we should read the primary text. Like what sort of nonsense is it to say, don't read the primary text about the stuff we're talking about. Your turn for a question, Jimmy. That's a complete mischaracterization. I said I didn't want the debate to be about that. I didn't say don't read it. This is, this is what a po master politician does. Roger is a very good politician. I would like to ask, do you think transactions should be free forever? I have no idea if the transaction should be free forever. I think the market should decide rather than a bunch of economic central planners. That's great, because uh, uh, the, the, the economic central planners are Bitcoin Cash, which 
basically say method of payment is the exact use case that everyone needs to use. Therefore, we're going to increase the block size to 32 megabytes, most of which isn't used at all. So just want to tell you that, great, you, we agree. So my turn for another question. So Jimmy was just complaining that method of payment is the killer app for Bitcoin or blockchains. Of course it is. That's what made Bitcoin popular from day one. It made Bitcoin this worldwide phenomenon that it is today because anyone could send and receive any amount of money with anyone instantly, basically for free. And that application has been destroyed by central planners on the BTC blockchain. And that's why people like myself and thousands and thousands of other businesses and millions of people around the world have started using other coins like Bitcoin Cash. What do you say? My question, not yours. Thank you very much. What? Do you say to the central planners who have decided that cash isn't the killer application or it shouldn't even be an application on the BTC blockchain? First of all, it's Bitcoin Cash that has the problem because free transactions aren't actually free. Uh, by 2028, three happenings and just 10 years from now, fees will presumably be very low and rewards on Bitcoin Cash will be 1.56 Bitcoin Cash. At current prices, that's about $750 per block. You might be able to sell a coffee on their blockchain, but you're not going to be able to sell anything bigger than like a laptop. That's way too much risk. It's too cheap to do the other uh, do the other thing. So, um, whatever he wants to say, I, like, it, oh, it's my turn to ask a question, right? Yeah. Okay. All right. So the question that I have for you is. You seem to quote Satoshi over and over again. Do you think Satoshi is God? What a stupid question. <laughs> there is no God, right? Each individual should be the God of their own life and control their own destiny. And that's what cryptocurrencies are about because it puts you in charge of your own life and your own money and your own destiny. And that's why I'm involved. So uh, what a waste of a question, Jimmy. So my question to you, now that it's my turn again. No, that, you are. All right, so uh, <laughs> Satoshi is not God, but he always appeals to Satoshi's vision. Uh, and what, what he's doing is saying this is the original intent, appealing to emotion, not logic. A lot of people don't realize that Satoshi made a lot of mistakes. Op, op check multisig has an off by one error. Um, let's see, so does the difficulty adjustment calculation. The non-space in the block header is too small, as is the timestamp. Um, you could tell Bitcoin Cash is incompetent technically because in their hard fork, they didn't fix any of that stuff. So a moment ago, I took a note when Jimmy was talking about the halving and how we have to limit the block size because the halving and the block reward will go down to try and accurately summarize the BTC. There were 50 Bitcoin. Per block today on the BTC chain, it's somewhere in the ball. The block reward is going up over time, not down. Why do you disagree? The block reward in Bitcoin is going up over time. Bitcoin Cash is the same price as it was about a year ago, so there's no reason to believe that Bitcoin Cash will go up, given that in the one year of its existence, it stayed the same. So you just heard it. He ignored almost 10 years of data and tried to cherry pick one year of data. It's very, very clear that as cryptocurrencies become more popular, even if the block reward goes down over time, the, in terms of that particular cryptocurrency, the reward in terms of dollars or fiat, which is what unfortunately most of the world is still denominating everything in today, goes up over time. And so they, limit, they limited Bitcoin's usability in the world to solve a problem that didn't even exist. That shows how incompetent they are economically. So Roger keeps reframing my answer as what he wants me to say instead of what I actually said. I said that Bitcoin Cash has one year of history. I didn't say that it was Bitcoin. That's his belief that Bitcoin Cash is Bitcoin. And he, he wants to add on the nine years of history that Bitcoin has to Bitcoin Cash somehow. This is a manipulation that you're facing, folks. It's somebody that keeps reframing. He's, he keeps saying that I said something that I didn't say. Why do you keep doing that, Roger? Why do you keep like making me sound uh, ma ma uh, like straw manning me by rephrasing what I say to be something completely different than what I actually said?
have some notes, so I hope you get my time can start when I start. So I made a list of things that make Bitcoin Bitcoin. Peer-to-peer -peer electronic cash system, low fee, fast payments, reliable payments, on-chain scaling, non-reversible payments, chain of digital signatures, opcodes enabled, SHA-256, one CP, one vote, longest chain with the most proof of work, cited from the Bitcoin white paper, Satoshi Nakamoto, Bitcoin.org. Bitcoin Cash has all but one of those. BTC today only has two of those characteristics that make Bitcoin. I gave a whole presentation on it yesterday. If you didn't see it, I hope you watch it. And I'd love to see your rebuttal to that. 30 seconds isn't honestly enough time, but please make a video rebutting why I'm wrong. Uh, Satoshi is not God, okay? And, uh, and what, what, what you're doing is appeal to Satoshi. It's not about logic. It's about, oh, Satoshi knows better than we do. No, the market knows better than Satoshi. Okay, and we don't want to share our property rights. We want to be sovereign over our own money. Bitcoin Cash is centralized. It's a fiat money. They, the elite cabal there controls your money. With Bitcoin, you control your own money. And we're not sharing our sovereignty with anybody, not even Satoshi. So I'm not saying Satoshi is God. I'm saying that certain characteristics define what Bitcoin is. Such things like the very title of the Bitcoin white paper the original Bitcoin.org website, and things the creator of Bitcoin, Satoshi Nakamoto, said. That doesn't mean Satoshi Nakamoto is infallible, but if you want to look to what the definition of Bitcoin is, I think those are fantastic, fantastic places to start. And if we look to those places, it's clear Bitcoin Cash has more Bitcoin-ness about it than BTC. And even if you disagree with that, I'm sorry, that's my time, I'll respect it. All right, so I, I just want to point out that what Roger's done over and over again is not answer any of my points, not answer the fact that his coin is centralized. He hasn't really disputed that at all. It's completely centralized. He's just accused Bitcoin of being centralized, which I've disputed. Um, and he continues to uh, appeal to Satoshi after saying, I'm not appealing to Satoshi, and then he just goes on and appeals to Satoshi. So um, this is the kind of logic that we're facing here, is somebody that doesn't really seem to understand that he, uh, like, just sort of spinning things in a way that sound good instead of logic. This is why I wanted a Lincoln Douglas debate. Anyway, um, I think I'm done. Uh, I, I'd like to end things here. Roger, would you like to end? That's my question. Of course not. We still have a half hour to go and I think people are enjoying this, but I think they'd enjoy it a little bit more if we get to talk about some things. Yeah, thank you. So one of the things he said, I'm not even answering his questions, Bitcoin Cash is centralized. Were you not paying attention when I pointed out that Craig Wright is arguing with Calvin Air, is arguing with InChain people, is arguing with Bitcoin Unlimited, is arguing with Bitcoin ABC, is arguing with me. If a bunch of people are busy arguing and fighting over something, it's not centralized. It's just that simple. Did you not understand? That's your question. I, I gave a rebuttal to that, and then you didn't. You never. Re, you never. You never answered that. Basically, that's evidence of centralization that there's a power. Anyway, um, I, I think I think we're done. I think we were scheduled to end at around 1:40, and I never agreed to go to 2:30. I just said we have time if we wanted to. And I am sick of this TMZ-style gotcha politics. I'm appealing to my authority. I'm going to read off uh, some stuff and say I I I know more because I read more than you. So I I'm not not interested in that sort of debate. We have a lot too. Tough names, everybody. Woo!